What is your first memory as a child? Do you remember it? Was it your first ride on the bicycle? Or blowing candles on your third birthday? Mine was running down the stairs of our building in Kuwait. Holding on to my superhero toy, Jongar. Jongar al batal al jabbar Under the skies of explosions, we left to Lebanon. It was the breakout of the Gulf War in 1990. I was only five years old, crying over losing my toys. But little did I know that I also lost my identity. In this world, you prove that you exist because there are paper documents given to you by your government, preserved in a centralized system. During the Gulf War, the birth registries got destroyed. And I lost the only proof of my existence, my birth certificate. It's a human right that seems so natural for everyone in this room. It was robbed from me in one instant. And I became the invisible man. I'm not going to do magic show here, I'm not going to disappear. And I don't have magical superpowers. It's quite the opposite. The title invisible is given by governments to people who do not have birth certificates. But I feel blessed. I feel blessed because at birth I had this document issued for me, even though I lost it at the age of five. Because according to the UN, 200 and 90 million children under the age of five do not have a birth certificate at birth. And they're not only denied their basic human rights, like education, healthcare, and mobility, but they're vulnerable. They're vulnerable for trafficking and child labor. So today I'm here to share a story about lost identity. How becoming the invisible man gave me the superpowers to break identity barriers, leveraging a technology like blockchain. I was raised in Lebanon. I went to school, graduated from university in a degree with business management. In 2011, I landed a job in The Hague, or Den Haag, at a software company. And I grew my passion for cryptocurrencies and blockchain. To be honest, I was living the Dutch dream, complaining about taxes, <laughs> complaining about the weather, and I even had a dog. But dreams do not last forever, even if they are Dutch. September 23, 2014, I was sleeping at home in my own bed, wrapped with my fluffy IKEA blanket. September 24, 2014, I'm sleeping on the cold floor of the detention center of the immigration in Ter Apel. In 24 hours, my life was changed. Why? Well, my work contract was not renewed. And my residency to stay in the Netherlands was canceled. As a holder of a Syrian passport in 2014, the only chance to stay in the Netherlands was to apply for asylum. There at the immigration center, I gave all my documents, passport, Dutch residency, even my library card. And now I became literally invisible. The only thing was left on me, other than my clothes, of course, was my smartphone, 3G internet, and Bitcoin wallet. Now, as you can imagine, the food menu in a refugee camp, or what we call an as I'd say, is not from a four-star menu. For breakfast, we had three slices of bread with some cheese. For lunch, it was one egg with a cup of soup. For dinner, it was some rice with vegetables. So for one day, it's nice food. For three weeks, 
I consider it a diet. <laughs> but for three months, it was unpleasant. So I had bitcoins on my phone, and there was thaisbesorgd.nl. <laughs> it was, for the people who don't know what's thaisbesorgd, it's a food takeaway website. What do you think happened next? A large pepperoni pizza <laughs> was delivered to the Azad Say in Terapel. The guards were amazed. How did this come here? Who ordered it from inside? And the refugees were asking me, how did you pay for it? They had cash on them, but they cannot pay online. Even worse, with their confiscated identities, they cannot transact digitally because financial institutions like Western Union or even banks they require some sort of identification. Soon we were having feasts in the camp. <laughs> and even some of my friends were able to wire digital money back home to their families. It felt like a victory. Because we broke the walls of their apple. In my journey, I moved between five camps. And I felt everywhere that we are all invisible. So I started thinking to myself, Bitcoin helped us, and the blockchain technology helped us to break the financial barriers. Can it help us break the identity barriers? And the answer is yes. The blockchain technology can help us build digital identities that are resistant to loss and to fraud. Identities that can be signed by institutions and these digital signatures cannot be forged. It can help us build a world where we control our identities and we decide with whom to share it. In the past two years, I partnered with international NGOs and I led discussions with the World Bank, the Dutch government, and even the European Union on how can we build digital identities that are inclusive for everyone. Because it also matters for you people. Your digital data identity needs to be with you and not with centralized organizations that can misuse it or that can lose it. So, in my journey as an invisible man, moving between asset says for two years, it was painful, but I will never complain. Because today I look back and I see how blessed I was to be a refugee in the Netherlands. Because 290 million children, they wake up for the same reality every day, that they do not exist. So are we going to do something about it? And the answer is with the people in this room. Because it's only up to us to support, represent, and create a world where everyone is invincible. Thank you.